Good morning. Uh, today we're going to be diving into our final value uh, of our local community, which is to encourage Christ-centered community within the local, national and the global church. The molten heart of this message is that we're all part of the mystical body of Christ that is on mission within the world. In the 1800s, uh, a Scottish Canadian missionary named John Geddy, a Presbyterian, felt the call to leave Canada and become a missionary in the New Hebrides Islands, now known as Vanuatu. Uh, he established his work on the island and faced a number of different setbacks. At times, the relationship between the missionaries and the islanders was, let's just say, very difficult. Uh, but they formed schools, they educated the islanders, they used the Bible as the means of teaching them to read. And when he died in 1872, a memorial was placed in the pulpit of the church in the village where he had been preaching. And it said this, in memory of John Geddy, DD, Doctor of Divinity, born in Scotland, 1815, minister in Prince Edward Island, seven years, missionary sent from Nova Scotia to Aniatum for 24 years. When he arrived in 1848, there were no Christians here. But when he left in 1872, there were no heathen. And the life of John Geddy encapsulates our final value. He was about Christ-centred community, making Christ the very centre of every community, but also the community of the church. The divine community, as it were, on earth. His life also encompasses the local, the national and the global. And it's our hope to see not only our little community here in the parks, but rather the whole, that we see ourselves as part of that whole. In the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church and the communion of saints. And that is to say that we're part of the body of the Messiah, a living body with Jesus at the head. And this body is united by the Holy Spirit. It includes people of all ages, past, present and future. G.K. Chesterton in Orthodoxy writes, Tradition means giving votes to the most obscure of all classes, our ancestors. It is the democracy of the dead. Tradition refuses to submit to the small, arrogant oligarchy of whoever merely happens to be walking around. There's something profound in that. The tradition means saying that in some areas, our ancestors were right and we might be wrong. The mystical body of Christ holds to the faith that has been believed everywhere, always and by all. It's not found in the innovations of Protestants, of Catholics or of Orthodox, but in the common core that we all hold, namely the message that we carry about Jesus as the Messiah. So what does it mean for us to be Christ centred? Paul in 2 Timothy Chapter 1, verse 9 writes, He is the one who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not based on our works, but upon his own purpose and grace granted to us in Christ Jesus before time began. I love this passage. Christ has saved us, not by our works, but by his grace. And God's purpose was for us in Christ before even time began. Think about that. Before time began, God knew you and he had a plan for you in the Messiah. To be Christ-centred, therefore, means on one level to see all of reality through the lens of Jesus the Messiah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, Paul writes, For there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we live, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Friends, all that exists is from the Father through the Son. From the Father through the Son. In Colossians verse 1, 15 to 16, we read, He, that's the one upon the cross, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation. 
For all things in heaven and on earth were created in him. Things, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, were created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and and all things are held together in him. To be Christ-centred, therefore, is to become aware that all things, all things, whether visible or invisible in extra dimensions or whatever else, is created through the risen, crucified one. And for him, all things are held together in him. Christ, therefore, is the very centre of all of reality. That is why Paul can say that through Christ Jesus, the risen, crucified one, all things exist. And through him we live. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 puts it this way. The sun is the radiance of his glory, the representation of his essence, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. So think about that. Just think about that. Right now, right now, all things are sustained and exist through the risen crucified one, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the universe, the 200 billion trillion stars, our Milky Way galaxy, our solar system, the 8 billion people living on planet Earth. All things were created through Christ, for Christ, and they're held together in Christ right now. Right now. Jesus the Messiah is the reason for all of creation. The whole universe at its core is Christ-centred. The problem is death, our separation from God and our ignorance about the true reality. And Jesus came to fix those things, to reorder all of creation back to how it was meant to be. So as Jewish and the Christian, the Jewish Christian Melito of Sardis, when he, he died in 180 AD, And in his Passover speech, he wrote this. The one who hung earth in space is himself hanged. The one who fixed the heavens in place is himself impaled. The one who firmly fixed all things is himself firmly fixed to the tree. This is the beating heart of Christianity, friends, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. The crucified, the Lord of glory. The one on the cross is the Lord of glory, the one who is causing all things to exist right now. That is the crucified one. So Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23 writes, We preach about a crucified Christ, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. And that is the heart of our message, friends. Being Christ-centred is keeping the risen, crucified Messiah, the centre of our preaching, of our life, of our message, of our community. It is also good to remember that Jesus' uh, community, uh, built upon the concepts of loving God and loving others, is actually a body community. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, 12 through to 14 writes this, For just as the body is one and yet as many members... All of the members of that body, though many are one body, and so too is Christ. For in the one spirit, we're all baptised into one body, whether we're Jews or Greeks or slave or free. We're all made to drink of the one spirit. For in fact, the body is not a single member, but many. We therefore are his body, his hands, his feet in the world, indwelt by his spirit. That's a profound thought, is it not? That all things visible and invisible, the whole universe, the whole cosmic order was created through Christ, for Christ, is held together in Christ right now. And yet his body in the world is us, the believing community. It's you. We're the ones through whom Christ is reordering the cosmos back to how it always should have been as rebellious hearts turn and give direct allegiance to Christ as the true order of reality. We're his hands and his feet in the world, his messengers, his servants. 
The body of the Messiah, therefore, is the living body in which Jesus is the head, united by the Holy Spirit. And it includes people of all ages, past, present and future, in all locations, the local, the, the national and the global spheres. And in Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, to the very farthest parts of the earth. So let's talk about our Jerusalem. Discovery Church is based in Parks and in Rawton, and also at the moment Central. And each of these areas are sub-districts of Jerusalem. Jerusalem proper is the whole of Swindon. But as such, we have our local connections as well, particularly with Gateway Church and with others within Good News for Swindon. Within the parks, um, our local focus is Oak Tree. And we can reach the parents, the families of the children who attend the schools. A key aspect is that our feeding programme and our Christmas outreach. Our Jerusalem, however, is big. 222,000 people live in Swindon. There's a lot that we can do across this town, uh, working with other parts of the body, and the body is a lot bigger than just us. Um, a gentleman at the time of the Reformation famously said, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, clarity. And this is how we must approach the wider body of Christ. We won't agree on everything. Uh, that's why we need liberty. But our attitude towards each other there should be charity or a more modern term love to love one another so let's turn now to our, our national situation our Judea and Samaria um, in the past we've been affiliated with the assemblies of God but we're currently without denomination we have many friends within the kinetic network of churches but we don't fully know what our future will hold what we do know is that the body of Christ is bigger than just Swindon Christ is present all over the UK and we plan to partner with Christians across the country to glory, give God the glory within this land. Let us turn to our, our global, the furthest parts of the earth in that passage. Uh, Isabel Miller-Kun, a Canadian church planter with China Inland Mission, said, I believe that in each generation God has called enough men and women to evangelise all the yet unreached tribes of the earth. It is not God who does not call, it is man who does not respond. And to that end is our hope that all the nations might turn to Jesus the Messiah. And we've partnered in the past with Christians in Albania, in Nagaland, in India, in Burkina Faso. We're very aware that the future of Christianity is in the global south. God's family is multinational. It's multiracial. There's more Anglicans who go to church on Sunday morning in Nigeria than in England. And therefore, Nigeria is, in a sense, more Anglican than England. Uh, it's estimated that more Chinese go to church on Sunday than across the whole of Europe. So which is more Christian then, Europe or China? In 2020, two thirds of Christians are in the non-Western global south. And by 2050, 77% of all Christians will live in the non-Western global south. The future of Christianity is African, it is Asian. The cultural battles that we face in the West, they're not the end of Christianity. If all the churches in Europe and North America died off in the next 50 years, the body of Christ would still be alive and well. We would see missionaries arriving from Asia and Africa to church plant on our shores. The Anglican Network in Europe was established in the end of 2020 by Anglicans across the world to plant biblically faithful Anglican churches in England, not part of the Church of England. Most of the senior leaders in the movement are Africans and Asians. They're, they're planting Anglican churches in England outside of the control of the Church of England. Praise God for what they're doing. As we think about the global body of Christ, we become aware that perhaps two thirds of all martyrs in the history of the church have been killed since 1900. Every day our, our brothers and sisters around the world are facing harassment, violence and the real possibility of death. And as such, we will continue to support groups like Food.Gives, Open Doors, various Bible societies and Barnabas Fund to assist these brothers and sisters.
Our heart is linked to what Paul writes in Galatians 3 verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaimed the gospel to Abraham ahead of time, saying, all nations will be blessed in you. Uh, Paul adds in Colossians 1, verse 18 to 24, he's the head of the body of the church, as well as the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself may become first in all things. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in the Son. And through him to reconcile all things to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. So the fact is, all of us are guilty of participating in sin. And as such, we've played our own part with the rebels against God. And it isn't them, people out there. But rather, it's all of us. Part of growing in faith is to repent, to turn away from our rebellion and partnership with sin and turn to God and partner with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the same one who walked with Adam in the garden, spoke with Abraham, wrestled with Jacob, met face to face with Moses, the one who Joshua chatted with and spoke to Samuel, the same person who stepped into Israel's story to fulfill the promises made to the Jewish people, that he was born of a virgin of David's line, that he died for our sins, removing them from us, that he took the burden of our sins, namely yours and mine, the holy one for the transgressors, the blameless one for the wicked, the righteous one for the unrighteous, the incorruptible one for those who are corruptible, the immortal one for us who are mortals. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. He was raised from the dead on the third day and he appeared to many, showing that he was indeed raised from the dead. And he's seated at God's right hand right now as Lord, Priest, King and Messiah. And he will come again to judge the world and set it right. So just as he had been with Israel in the cloud and in the flame in the wilderness, now he's within each of us by the Holy Spirit. So Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, And to be found in him, not because I have my own righteousness derived from the law, but because I have a righteousness that comes by way of Christ's faithfulness, a righteousness that God, from God, that is in fact based on Christ's faithfulness. Paul, Paul says he was blameless regarding the law, but his righteousness that is found in Christ is not based on that. It's not based on his ability to keep the law, but rather of Christ's faithfulness to God. The fact that Christ is faithful for us. And that is our righteousness. So friends, as we think about the local, the national, the global, we must remember that you're accepted by God, not because of your good works, which may be good. You might have many good works, but because of the faithfulness of Christ for you. His life, his death, his resurrection are all for you. They are for you. He wants to free you from guilt, shame, from your past sins, from the power of sin in your life at this moment. He wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit that you might be free. So in conclusion, friends, the body of the Messiah is the living body with Christ at its head, united by the Holy Spirit. It includes people of all ages, past, present and future in the local, the national and the global spheres. And we seek to be Christ centred by realising that all things visible and invisible, the whole universe and the cosmic order are created through Christ, for Christ and held together in Christ. And yet his body is present in the world through the believing community, through you and through me. We're the ones through whom Christ is reordering all of the cosmos back to how it should be. We're his hands, his feet in the world. Each of us has a role to play in the healing of the world, in being healed in our relationship back to God. Let me say, Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that we might be that healing presence in the world, Lord. Having been reconciled with you, we might be reconcilers in the world. Having been justified um, because of the righteousness of Christ, that we might be uh, justice bringers within the world. Amen.